How to negotiate with an insurance adjuster when you don't have a lawyer. Hi, I'm Tom Friedman, I'm a lawyer in Nevada, and negotiating with an insurance adjuster is important because insurance companies exist because they can make a profit. And the way they make profits is they make good investments, they don't insure super high risk people or businesses, or if they do, they charge a ton of money, and they don't overpay on their claims. And that's the one we're here to talk about today. So how does this whole thing work? Um, in a typical scenario, you are injured by somebody that has insurance. The insurance company for the person that injured you contacts you and says, hey, I know you've got a claim. I'm going to make you an offer. You're going to sign something and this will all be taken care of. Fantastic. So what do you need to look out for well, when this happens? Well, there's a couple things at play. The first thing you want to talk about is liability, and that means fault. The insurance company needs to know that the person or business that they insure is at fault for the harm to you. And so how do they find that out? Well, it depends on what the scenario is, slip and fall, auto accident, product defect, whatever it may be, they want evidence more than just what you say versus what the person they insure say. So things like photographs, videos, witness statements, uh, police reports, incident reports, gather up whatever you have that shows that the other person is responsible for your harm and send copies of that over to the insurance adjuster because the first hurdle they need to get over is showing and knowing that the person they insured caused your harm. And then once they know that the person they insure caused your harm, then it's time to talk about damages, which is money. And everyone loves to talk about money. So how do you get the insurance company to pay you money for your injuries? Well, now they know that the person or business they insure caused you harm. It is now your job to demonstrate how much harm they caused you. And there's a number of ways to do this. Um, as a general rule, if there's a small amount of harm, small injuries, small medical treatment, then the settlement's going to be small as well. On the flip side, if there's massive injuries, massive bills, the settlement's probably going to be pretty big. So what you need to get to the insurance adjuster is your past medical bills that resulted from the incident, whatever it may be. If you had to go out to a pharmacy and buy medications or buy some sort of medical devices, anything like that, gather all those receipts up. They are all going to go to the insurance adjuster so they can put everything in its little box so they know how much to pay you. Another thing is if you missed work, go ahead and get whatever documentation that shows how much you make hourly or if your salary, you can break it down and see how much you make a week and then get them that information along with the information that shows how many days, weeks or months you were off work. And then it's just simple math. If you make thousand dollars a month and you're off for two months then it's two thousand dollars for your loss of earnings claim the more squishy claim is pain and suffering and so in order to get money for that you're going to have to show them that there was pain and suffering again if your injury was you stubbed your toe it probably smarted for a few minutes and that's probably the end of it but if you're in a severe accident and you had to go through surgery and you had to go through rehabilitation and the process took months or years, that's going to be a longer period of time for pain and suffering, which means it's going to be a larger award. Also, you want to look at what you do in your life before the accident versus after. And this is different for everybody. Some people, they bowl, they play soccer, they play baseball, they're swimmers, um, they travel, whatever it is you do before the accident that you can't do after or you couldn't do for a certain amount of, amount of time, you wanna also document that as well. And you give all of this information to the insurance adjuster and say, hey, look, this is how this affected my life. It affected my relationships. And you know, please look at all of this, analyze it, and then let's talk numbers. And what generally happens is at some point, the insurance adjuster is gonna contact you and say, okay, look, I've got all your information. I've, I've gone over it and I offer to settle the claim to you for X dollars. And the first offer is generally going to be a low offer. It's very rare that some insurance company is gonna to come to you with their highest and best offer 
right out of the gate. They almost expect you to make a counter offer or if they tell you 5,000, you come back to them and say 10,000. They, they sort of expect this negotiation process. It's not like going to the grocery store where an apple is $2 a pound. So you know when you go to the register, it's going to be $2 a pound. If uh, negotiating with a uh, insurance adjuster was like going to the store, you'd go up to the, ins- you'd go to the register and instead of paying $2 an apple, you would say, no, I only want to pay $1 an apple and, and they're a pound. And they'll say, no, well, let's do $1.85 a pound. And you'll say, no, 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 that's still way too much. Let's do a hundred, $1.30 a pound. And, and you'll come to some number. And that's sort of what it is negotiating with these settlements. And it's important to negotiate for the entire settlement because most of the time, what happens is, let's say you come to a number, $10,000. The insurance company is going to send you a release that says, in exchange for $10,000, you're releasing all claims known and unknown. So that means you're done. When you cash that check, when you sign that settlement, your claim is done. So if you go to the doctor the week after and the doctor says, oh, oops, I overlooked this x-ray, you're going to need a three-level cervical fusion that's for $180,000 and you're going to be out of work for however many months. Well, too bad, so sad. You've already released the entire claim so you cannot go back and reopen it. So it's very important to get the whole claim settled at what at one time. So you're going to get this offer. It's probably going to be low. Then you're going to go back to the insurance adjuster and you're going to use the facts of your case. These are my bills. This is how long I was off of work. Um, this is how much money I've been out of pocket. This is how it affected my life. And based on all of this, I believe that the claim value should be up here instead. And then the insurance adjuster will probably come back and say, well, okay, I'll offer you a little bit more. And then maybe you come down a little bit and maybe you do meet in the middle and you have the case resolved. Well, let's say you're still apart and you're not resolving the case. One thing you can do is talk about trial because insurance companies often have two tracks. You have a track to settle a case, which is how all all cases begin. And then the second track is what happens when you go to litigate. And an insurance company knows that if you go file a lawsuit, now they have to file their own answer to your complaint in court, which costs money. They have to have a lawyer do it. Some insurance companies have their own staff lawyers that are paid employees. Others, they farm it out to independent lawyers. But this lawyer time, whether they're staff or whether they're farmed out, costs money. And so sometimes you can make an argument to the insurance company, hey, look, you know, we're really close. You know it's going to cost you a bunch of money to defend the case when I file the lawsuit. So why don't you pay me a little bit more money so you can avoid this cost of defense? Maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't work for you. But it's worth a try because a cost of defense is a real thing that insurance companies have to deal with. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you very much for watching.